So we've made it to Uncommon Leadership episode two. We made it. Here hosted. <laughs> episode two. <laughs> episode two. We made it to the second episode. We've, we've doubled our, our output. I love it. Amazing. Um, hosted by Pastor Shane at his house. We've got some new faces around the bench. It's not a table this week. We've got Pastor Emily. Hello. Hello. From our West location. And Pastor Pat. Okay. From our West location, our worship pastor. That was speaking. pastor, not postman. Postman. <laughs> postman. <laughs> postman Pat. The postman always delivers. He does delivers. deliver good news though. He does. He does. He, does. he, does. he, does. he, does. he delivers fixed also. <laughs> so uh, before we start um, on today's um, discussion, I mm. wanted to know why you're so adamant about having this podcast and filming this podcast here at your house. Adamant, that's a strong word, but you know what? That would be a true word. That would be an accurate description. The reason is, is because for years, so much of Enjoy Church has come out of here. Mm. We are a relational church. Bottom line, we are all about relationship. We love relationship. We we love we, we, we love people. We love having people into our home. We love having leaders into our home. And so so the reason I have been adamant because the question was asked, can we can we take this into a <laughs> church building with service studio? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I want it to come out of here. It's, for me, to be honest, this is a happy place. This is a God place. This yeah. is a safe place. Yeah. And so much of our leadership has come out of here. When we look around our locations all around Australia and now overseas, it's like there's no doubt about it. So many of those leaders were raised up in our lounge room, in our family room. Mm -hmm. And so we all remember the days when we'd get like uh, 70, 80 people. We've had 150 people in, in this room. And it's like, but that's what, the way we've done it. So I think if we're going to talk about uncommon leadership, this is where it comes out of. So that's why we're here. It's very good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love being invited into your world. Yeah, you're not, you're not holding it back. It's not just church. It's your world, your family. So Yeah, and that's what we're after yeah. through the podcast, isn't it, really? Mm. We, we're not looking to uh, to do it all clean and neat. We, we really want to, okay, let's be family. Let's talk heart yeah. to heart and see where it goes. Very good. Now, I heard some reviews after the third po first podcast that this is possibly the world's greatest podcast. Did you hear that? I think I said that. Uh, oh, that was your that was, that was your review, which is. But can I say it with humility? Because we're going to be talking about humility. Uh, like so when I said it's the Absolutely. world's greatest, I did say. It was Moses humility. did say he's the most humble man on the planet, and he yeah, wrote it himself. So I like that. Yeah. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, yep. There's a post on Instagram. Yep. I like these. You call them "Hey Pastor." Yeah, yeah. And it says on it. Um, that the two, compa two companions to accompany me through life, while God's goodness and mercy might be right up there, I think integrity and humility, yep. they trump them. Yep. Tell us yep. more about that. Yep. On the, yeah, that's right. So in regards to Trump, yeah. morning Donald, yeah. <laughs> moving right along. When it comes to goodness and mercy, David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mm. He's talking about God's goodness and God's mercy. Mm. When it comes to integrity and humility, that's not coming from God. That's coming from us. You know, and so mm. it, it's like we celebrate all the gifts, but the gifts have been given to us by God. Yeah. When it comes to character, that's our business. That's mm. our work. That's our heart. That's our response. And so mm. I, I pray and I hope, you know, and the reason I do those hey, hey pastor posts mm, and put them out to the world is because I'm not just looking to speak to our pastors, but pastors in general. To be honest, I think in the kingdom of God, mm. there's a there's a lot of fluff out there and a lot of stuff that's put up there is maybe being rich for this, but I'm not necessarily sure that we're all the time reaching for the right stuff, if mm. I can be really honest. Mm. As in, we would all pray for goodness and mercy and we, we should, I get that. Yep. But I, Lord, I, I pray and I hope that we, pastors of Enjoy, pastors around the world would understand that that God is looking to raise up men and women that have integrity, yep. that will yeah. walk in humility. And so for me, it's like, well, I'm not going to be focusing on goodness and mercy. I'm going to be focusing on my integrity and my humility because that, at the end of the day, when I'm focusing on that, I'm focusing on what is right according to Scripture, and it's going to bring about a reward in the end. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Yeah, I love those hey pastor posts, and they're, and they're not just for pastors, are they? No, they're not. Yeah. And they're not meant to be. It's like this podcast. It's a leadership podcast. But this leadership podcast isn't just for the pastor, it's for the husband, mm. it's for the mother, it's yep. for the children, it's for the CEO, it's for everybody in our community. Mm. Yeah. And I'll open it up. Like, what does um humility and integrity mean to you guys? Yeah, I mean, integrity, there's so much loaded into that one word, right? But for me, the word that 
is attached to that is being uncompromised in the way that we live for God. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, as I was sort of really thinking about this word, uh, this little quote by C.S. Lewis came up. It was doing the right thing even when no one's watching. Yeah. And that really just like, that sort of stuck with me. Even when no one's watching, whether we are uh, in our business place, in, in church, whatever it might be, it's like always doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would say for me, um, when I think about humility and integrity, I would think about humility in terms of, um, I think, a diminished um, focus on self altogether. That when we come to God, that we come to God with a humble heart, knowing that without him, we have nothing. Um, And so we go to him and then he leads us in the path of righteousness. And so those paths of righteousness being integrity and that he leads us in that. And so then when I think about integrity, I think about... um, that it's it's about the unseen, it's about the motive, it's mm. about um, our why behind what we do. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And I, I agree totally. And this is one of the reasons I think it's the unseen, mm. so it's not celebrated. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a real danger in this because you have people, men and women, men and women of God, men and women in the community, men and women who have lived lives of integrity, mm. but we don't celebrate integrity. Mm. We, we celebrate gifting, we mm. cel- celebrate presence, we celebrate platform celebrate so many things that they did themselves and they're not bad they're great yeah. but I, I i promise you there are some things that in heaven matter way more than the outworking of the gifts that heaven has given us so true. and so for me it's like when i think about integrity i think at large it's not celebrated but it's what our young people need it's what our marriages need mm-hmm. because without integrity as in everything gets broken down I think uh, I think it was a Reverend um, uh, Aaron who told us the other day, it would be yesterday, I'm looking across here, you don't know, he's over there. But Aaron <laughs> was telling us that the word integrity means intact. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, and, and I, I love that thought, I love that concept, and it's like, because this, this way, like, you need integrity in your foundations. Yeah. yeah. You need integrity in fabric. So true. You need integrity in ministry. Exactly. You need integrity in your word. Mm. Because without integrity, there's a breaking down. And you know as well as I do, we're sitting in a house. If the foundations go, yeah. the house comes down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important. And that's why we need to celebrate and talk about integrity as being something that we all want to lay hold of. Yeah. And for the sake of integrity, um, I'm just going to help Aaron out. It was Pastor Ralph that messaged Pastor Aaron to <laughs> say that the word integrity means intact. I'm just helping you out because we're talking about integrity. That's today. right. And if you speak to Pastor Ralph, he was in prayer and Jesus said to him. <laughs> wow, that's a direct connection. I love that. Aaron. But I've got your back always. Um, I just want to pull on that thread because the word seen, we've, you've said seen, seen, seen. It's, it seems like this world is obsessed mm. with people seeing part of my life. Like I, I was driving down the road yesterday and I, I reckon I saw three or four people um, filming themselves <laughs> in an intersection. It was bizarre. And I'm like thinking to myself, we're obsessed with people seeing us. Like just elaborate on that. What, what are your thoughts on that? It's a great question. And, and you'd have to ask why I was on the road filming myself as I waved when you went past. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> it's a TikTok but, dance. <laughs> but there could be a reason why they're doing that. There could be like, he could be a like TikTok guru yeah. and, and he's making his money out of it. I, I don't know. But it could also be it's like, it's, it's like where, where's it coming from? I think mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to be seen if it's for the right reason. Yeah. yeah. As it all comes back to heart motives, isn't it, at the mm. end of the day? It's like why do people want to be seen? Why is it? What, so, so one might say that we're putting up a podcast to be seen, it's and true. that is true. So what is the motive behind it? Mm. And, you know, when it comes to integrity, when it comes to humility, everything's in balance. It's all on the scales. That's what I love about Proverbs. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think a lot of the time we can see and make up our own mind as to why people may be doing something, but the Lord weighs the motives of the heart. We've got to be right. careful we don't do that yeah. too quickly. Mm-hmm. And then did you did you actually pull over and ask any of them, why are you filming No, <laughs> <laughs> it's the traffic lights. It's trying to get home, actually. It was tra- traffic everywhere, but anyway. <laughs> so it's all about motive. What's yeah. the motive? Why do people want to be seen? Yeah. As in, it's a I, to great be honest, question, actually. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. these days I'm more than uh, happy not to be seen. Mm. And it's like, really? And it's like, yeah. It's like, you know me, I'm a sanguine and I've lived at 100 mile an hour mm. coming out of last year. I'm actually happy to just step back a little and let everybody else take whatever. But there's certain spaces that 
I still really do want to be seen in because I know in those places my voice will make a difference. Yeah. But there's other places where you don't need me, so knock yourself out. Yeah. Hey, Emily, <laughs> don't you love these things? They're awesome. No, I love them. I feel like I'm sitting with an octopus. Man, I, the thing that comes to mind, obviously, in the days that we live in is like social media and how what we see on social media is like the highlights of our life, right? Like mm. on my Instagram, I'm not posting, you know, me making a sandwich for lunch or anything like that, but I'm posting, you know, holidays, all that sort of stuff. And you, you, you sort of think about that and think about, okay, we live in a society now where that is what we are seeing of each other. It's like these, these big things, these big highlights in our life. And so it's almost like the things that are unseen become less important. And it's almost like what we think people think of us is now important. Ooh, that's a good point. And so it's like, what about what God thinks of us? Mm. You know, I think that's, that should always be the most important. Mm. And there's, as you said, there's nothing wrong with posting on social media, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That stuff's great. It's awesome. But it's the intent of the heart. And it's the way that we live in terms of pleasing God. Mm. You know, I think that's what's really, really important there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think it goes back to um, valuing what God values. Mm. So if he values above all else purity of heart, then we are to steward our heart in a way that is honoring and pleasing to him. I mean, mm. I think about um, the Pharisees and the way that they lived their life. They, on the outer, their outer world, everything that they were doing in the outer world was God's will. They knew the word of God. They were serving their community. They were um, like actively involved in the, in the church. They valued, honored that mm. on the outer and yet Jesus called them hypocrites. And mm. so the hypocrites, Ouch. because their outer Ouch. world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and their inner world weren't, weren't aligned. aligned yeah. On yeah. the outer world, yeah. they were honoring the will of God, but then on their inner world, yeah. they were still wanting to live for their own will. So, good. so I yeah. think they yeah. were, um, yeah, double-minded in that. Mm. Duplicity. Mm. Duplicity. Yeah. That's an interesting thought because like when you're talking about uh, there was alignment, that's integrity, isn't there? Mm. There's no duplicity mm -hmm. of heart. Yeah. And the scriptures talk yep. about, you know, there's why God would have us be men and women of integrity yep. where there is no duplicity, mm. where what we are saying is aligned with our heart. And the, you know as well as I do, there's a whole lot within the community. Mm. Uh, there's a whole lot even within church spaces and family spaces mm. and church spaces where people say one thing but are thinking another. Mm. Yeah. And this is never pleasing to God. Yeah. Yeah. Never, never, never. Yeah. yeah. You wrote here... Um, uh, what Paul says in the Bible, think about yourselves with sober judgment. Yeah, yeah. Sober judgment, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And you've heard me say before, as in some people just get drunk on how good they think they are. <laughs> it's like they've got the fumes of their own, you know, it's like, it's like they're, they're mm. high on themselves and they don't, have, they don't have good judgment as to where they're at. I, I think, you know, when we talk about humility, I think, it, I think we need to be people that, that, are, that are humbled but do have sober judgment mm. in regards to who they are and where they're at mm. in their journey in life and in yeah. Christ. And it's like, because if you don't, I can promise you this, pride comes before the fall. Mm. And that's why it's like when, you, when you're getting high on how good you are, well, that's like it's only a matter of time <laughs> before you get a trip up because that's yeah. the nature of pride. It's going to bring you down. It's quick as it'll take you up. It's going to bring you down. And so yeah. um, we, we need to have sober judgment. And I think, to be honest, in having sober judgment, it's really good to have um, have friends in your car that are going in the same direction that can speak into your life yeah. and yeah. help you when you're getting a little bit full of yourself. Mm. And so we all need men and women around us that can just speak the truth in love. And I'm not talking about, you know, you know, the person that's just rude and they're saying, I'm just speaking the truth in love. And I was <laughs> like, hurts. yeah, no, you're being a schmuck. You know what I mean? It's like, that, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people that love us, that journey with us, that care for us, that are there for us, yeah. and that are, that are able to come alongside and mm. just say, hey, can, can we have a coffee? And, and just be honest mm. with us. And, but there's, you know, as well as I do, a lot of people are a little bit prickly and it's like, no, you can't do that. But that's, you don't, you never want to be there. Yeah. Never want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that sort of advice has to be from people that you trust as well yeah. and that lead trust, by example yeah. in that space. Yeah. Um, I know for yourself, Pastor Shane, you have so many people in this world that you can lean into and that you trust and actually don't just say it, but actually live that life yeah. of humility and integrity. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think when your heart is um, to honour God and to keep it purely in his sight, Mm. then it becomes a lot easier than to be accountable or not easier, simpler, I guess, to be accountable because um, you're going to be accountable because you know that's the safest place to be. You want people to speak into your life. You Mm -hmm. want people to speak into your motive and and the reason why you do things because um, it's it's about keeping it right before God. And so that's it's a safer place, keeping it under authority because that yeah that's the way that it's going to be um pure yeah yeah so so in that space okay so i feel like um we're talking from from a place of having those people in our lives mm. but the truth is not everyone has mm. the the people in their lives how do you cultivate that how did you cultivate that pastor shane mm. having people I, in your life that that you can trust but they help you not to get too ahead of yourself or think more highly than you ought to like how, how do you cultivate that for someone that doesn't have those type of people in their lives yeah so the first thing is you got to want it mm-hmm. you, you have to want it the first thing i did when i landed in western suburbs of melbourne 25 and a half years ago i knew nobody but i reached out to a district leader of the acc because i wanted people in my life mm. and so i reached out in that direction and then that, that, that willingness and desire to have the right people in my life. There are some people you don't want in your life. It just being, as in, I don't, don't know if you're allowed to say it that clearly, <laughs> but it's like, no, nah, I don't want you in my life. And it's like some people you don't want in your life, but there are people that you that you not only want, you actually need to have them mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. And so it's always been my desire to have people that have gone before me, mm-hmm. that care for me, that would look out for me, to have them in a, in a position where they are free to speak and, you know, th- this free to speak, there has to be people in our world that we give permission to speak. Okay. Now, I know that, okay, so a lot of people would say, yeah, that's my spouse and that's great. But you've got to go beyond that mm-hmm. because your spouse is always going to be your spouse and they will view you in a certain light. So in my case, I, I, I have had people within ACC um, uh, that have been over me as far as regions and districts and et cetera, et cetera. I have people beyond our church that have been spiritual fathers to me that have authority to speak into my life. I give them permission. I actually speak it out and let them know they can speak into my life whenever they feel they need to or want to. Um, we, we have an advisory team uh, to our vision team, so uh, vision advisors mm. that are outside of our vision team that have permission to speak. The vision team have permission to speak. Our board have permission to speak. And it's like, how many people do you let speak into your life? <laughs> the, the reality is very few actually do in the context of bringing any correction. But but if they ever feel they need to, I want them to know they That's can. Yeah. Why do I want them to know they can? Because I know they love me. They've been We've been travelling together for years. So I would say to everybody, don't go find five cl- five friends and say, hey, no, 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 no. Go on the journey of life yeah. Yeah. and bring people in. As in you've heard me say relationships are spatial, as yeah, in not just yeah. special, yeah. spatial. Yeah. So you bring people in and you bring them closer and closer. And over time, your your true friends and, and people that God would have around you will prove themselves faithful. Mm. And as they prove themselves faithful, then they have the right to speak. And then so, but I'd encourage you, I'd encourage all of you, I'd encourage every young pastor, I'd encourage every everyone, have people in your life that can, be, out of a heart of love, speak what they need to speak to you. Yeah, well, you answered my next question was, how do you identify that? And yeah. it's yeah. not having your heart on your sleeve and just telling everyone everything, yeah. but go on a journey and, and be patient with it. That's right. And for me, it's taken 25 years of being a senior pastor to get mm. to here where I have tables of people like this that have proven That's themselves right. faithful over mm. years and and beyond our, our world I have friends that they I know love me and it's like I, I I need to hear them when they need to speak. Any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I I would say like just watching the people around me, um, especially my pastors, Pastor Shane, Pastor Christian, uh, the boldness to make the call to the people that you see faithful or like pastors externally and having the boldness to make the call and just say, hey, I want to lean into you. Um, sometimes it can seem like a scary thing, especially if you don't have those people in your world to make the call and to be like, hey, I want to lean in. I want to learn from you. I want to know how you do things. 
So it's just like that boldness. That's really, really cool to be okay. able to do that and that courage. Okay, so yeah. it's the boldness connected to vulnerability. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's what you're that's what yeah. you're really putting yourself out to be, isn't it? Vulnerable. Yeah, hundred percent. Because if if you're not going to be vulnerable, then this relationship now lacks integrity. Yeah. Because it's yeah. never going to fulfill yeah. what God would have it fulfilled. Because it's like, on one hand, we're saying we want you to speak in, but I'm not going to be vulnerable. Yeah. So if I'm not going to be vulnerable, it's not going to work. It, the integrity of this thing is now destroyed. And it's the humility to say, <laughs> I, I don't have it all together. Like, there's, I'm still learning. There's, yeah. There's, there's this swings of miracle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It all yeah. comes around. Yeah. With, right. And the flip side of that being pride. Yeah. I know it all. I don't want yeah. you to speak into my life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need people in my life. I don't need people in my That's life. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, I am, um, I'm, I gotta say, smart enough, dumb enough, I'm not too sure, <laughs> to realize I need people. Yeah. As I, as I, can I encourage everybody? Never be the smartest person in every room. Mm. Mm. Never be the smartest person at every table. Mm. Never be, because when we think we're the smartest person, then we just, block the doors, the avenues for God to be speaking life. Mm. As in, I, I, I'm, I'm so aware, the reason you're here, why aren't I doing an Uncommon Leadership podcast by myself and just bring all the wisdom myself? I need you. As, I, I, as in, my relationship with all of you is so precious and pure and godly and, and you feed me like I feed you. Mm. But And it may be different. We have different roles. True, but different roles. Mm. But we're all brothers and sisters in Christ that can learn from each other. I yeah. guess it's that sobering look at yourself with sober judgment, yeah. isn't it? That, yeah. that whole thing of knowing. Yeah. yeah the, the, the humility is the knowing I need these people, I need yeah. them to speak into my life. And I love what you were saying, Pastor Shane, about um, like we have to want to be accountable because it just doesn't work if we aren't willing to be transparent, if we aren't willing to be open, if we aren't willing to actually speak about the things we're struggling with or where we've gone wrong or whatever it is, it, there has to be. Um, that true transparency mm. for the purpose of being molded yeah. into the likeness of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You know, the word accountability, it's mm. always an interesting one because, you know, I, I've, in all these years I've had people at different times saying, you need to hold this person accountable, you need to make them accountable. And it's like they, they don't understand how accountability works. Mm -hmm. Accountability works because I make myself accountable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the context of of enjoy and, and positions and paid positions and then, yeah, we will go down a path when it comes to the outworking of ministry and getting the job done, so to speak. But when it comes to heart, only the individual can make themselves accountable. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. That's, that's why I'm talking about when you're reaching out to someone mm. who you want to be in a relationship with, you want them to speak in. If we're not vulnerable, yeah. accountability is not, it's, it's, it, the integrity is broken. It breaks down. Uh, so, where does self awareness come into this? Because obviously, we have to be self-aware of where we're at That's in right. order to be able to reach out to yeah. people or to know that maybe it's okay for others to speak into us. Yep. So how, how does how do you develop that self-awareness? And that's a great question. Yeah. So as some of you are aware, um uh 2023 for me was a mm. very, very challenging year. And uh sitting with Dr. Lickin, who is a psychiatrist, my psychiatrist mm. when I'm in his office, and uh, and in life, he's like he's just been a brilliant. Yeah, uh, I would almost describe him as a mind coach. Is is like because like it's interesting that we'll all go to a personal trainer when we're having physical difficulties and mm. no one thinks anything of it. Yeah. you speak to a counselor, or a, a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever mm. the case may be, and, and there's still a bit of ooh. <laughs> and um, but I, I've loved talking with him, and what he has said numerous times to me is, Pastor Shane, you are very aware of yourself. Mm. And so I think that though comes back to um, with sober judgment. Yeah. As in and this whole sober judgment, yeah. you've got to be able to examine yourself mm. with sober judgment, look at yourself with sober judgment. And then, and for me, that the willingness just to have people speak in, because mm. the problem with my blind side is I can't see it. That's right. Yeah. And so I need you yeah. and I need others mm. to come alongside and say, Okay, are you aware? Are you aware? I, I was. Uh, I asked a couple of our um, our vision team members a number of years ago. Okay, give me the three things I'm doing well at the moment. Give me the three things I'm doing poorly. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting because um, when it when it came to the things that were poorly, there was certainly uh, certainly overlap. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's brilliant to hear. I needed to hear yeah. that. And I was like, 
but they 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 highlighted some some mm. blindness in my perspective, yeah. and so. You, you, yeah, we need each other. We need to be able to look at it with sober judgment. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's good. I'll jump on. It's it's not in order and it's doing my head in, but I love that it's bouncing around. <laughs> yeah. I like order here. But um, um, we, we spoke about during the week as we prepared um, the, the, the statement, choose your heart. Like it's hard to do this, this whole space mm. of integrity and humility. But yeah. the flip side of not doing that is also just as difficult. And last year... Um, you very openly told the church that you were diagnosed with severe depression. Yeah, yeah. How did you come out of that? Like, what what was the process of that? You okay. mentioned Dr. Lekin in there, and yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the truth is, when when I went upside down, and that's how I'd probably describe it, um, it was a uh, it was a crash. It was like I went to see the doctor, and and then I started the journey. How how I came, it, it took time. Yeah. As in, I needed to do a number of things. I needed to step away. And people, you know, uh, thank me for being courageous. The word was you used before, <laughs> courageous, best every way. I didn't have a choice but to step away. It was like, it wasn't a case of, um, I, I think I'm going to do the, the wise thing here. Mm. It was what I had to do in the moment. Mm. So uh, obviously I had, uh, I had five months basically off, even though we were in contact, but it, I had basically five months out. Uh, but I, I went to work on the areas that I could work on. Mm. And I, I thank God, you know, and this is one of those things that it's like, it's like because I have the right people in my life, I have the right people sitting at my tables because I've always made myself accountable. Mm. In this season, you all carried me and gave us a space that I could deal with what I needed to deal with. And so we went on that journey. Mm. And so um, I chose my heart. But but the truth is I went after it. You know, okay, that's uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Lickin's wife, uh, Ao, is also a psychiatrist and she made a comment one day and, and it made me laugh. She said, Pastor Shane, you've taught us so much. And, and I laughed because I know some of the conversations I've had along the way. <laughs> and I'm like, what did I teach you? And she said, you've taught us how to fight. And I'm like, wow. And I, I said in the moment, I didn't have a choice. And she goes, actually, you did. Yeah, You did have a choice. Yep. And it's like, and it's like, yeah, well, I probably did when you think about it. But for me, it's like, I want to be the very best individual I can be for God, mm. for my wife, for my mm. children, for my grandchildren, for you. As I, and this is why it's in our, this is why it's here. Mm. Yeah. It's like when, when I open up my heart, I'm opening up my, my home and my life. Yeah. And it's like, so I needed to fight to be the best me that I could be, that I can be the best me I can be for all of you. And, and the best me for me too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's definitely not a passive thing, yeah? If no. You just, if you stop, if you sit back, yeah. you mm. tend to gravitate towards the yeah. the wrong side of the pendulum. Yeah. Mm. And so so in regard to that, you would have heard me say that um, not for a minute was I prepared to make depression my friend yeah. or my companion. Mm. Yeah. And it, it never was. It was the enemy. And I was like, I wasn't the enemy. This sickness was the enemy and I wanted to beat it. And by the grace of God, we're, we're well and truly heading down that track. And so uh, my encouragement to everybody, doesn't matter what we're, we're faced with, we, we have to be prepared to rise above. We have to have a desire, a commitment. We're talking about integrity and humility. Mm. And it's like, so in this space, and you know as well as I do, is it, when you've got severe depression or whatever the case may be, post-traumatic stress disorder or or anxiety or stress or whatever, your life can go upside down really quickly if you're not committed to making the right decisions, choosing the right heart. So it's like we've got to, we've got to do what we've got to do. Can I ask Pastor Shane, um, would you say it's because you were you are surrendered to his will that it almost felt like you didn't have a choice but to lead yourself in that period of time and get the people in, get the help, things like that in that in that season? Yeah, it's really interesting, Emily. Like, if you ask that, I can say, yes, I'm surrendered to Israel. <laughs> what, what I think is this. In, in 1987, I gave my life to Christ. Yeah. I had alcoholic, well, I, I don't know if I had alcoholic, but I, went, I was rolled in unconscious to a hospital um, because I'd been drinking. I came out of Jesus freak. I encountered mm -hmm. Christ. My love and my gratitude for Jesus has just been as, as what is led us to this place today. That's great. When, when, I, when I went upside down and 
the, the, the concept of not having God in the middle of it all it never entered the equation because God is the centre of my life. Mm. Mm. So even though I felt like I was drowning, um, mm. I knew where my help comes from. Yeah. And so there, there was months there where it wasn't pretty and it wasn't pleasant and I was, I was scrapping, as it were, to try and, and I was thrashing in the water trying to keep my head above the water. But... But I knew I still knew where my help came from, mm. yeah. and and because of that, the, the God awareness. Mm. I thank God for the God awareness because that then allowed me to continue to walk in integrity, yeah, and great. continue to um, have a level of humility mm. that I'd probably never had to experience mm. before. Because now mm. I am I am in complete need of everybody's help, mm. and that is very humbling mm. for a senior leader. Wow. And then to be fairly transparent with that journey last year. Yeah. What I find interesting is the amount of people that have been so thankful that I was transparent yeah. because there are so many people suffering in this space but nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. But it's like, why, why won't we talk about it? Yeah. It's like it's like we're all humans. We're all faced with the same challenges. We break an arm. We put plaster on our arm. Everyone's like, you've got a broken arm. It's like if something breaks, let's get the help we need and great. move forward. Oh, so yeah. good. So good. There's a hot, this is going everywhere at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, you're right. Um, it's just like breaking an arm. There, there's a stigma associated with that. Like, w what are your thoughts? Like, why don't if if I've seen people break their arm and post that and be like, hey, look at my you know fracture or whatever, and be yeah. like, I'm recovering. Like, why don't we do that? Pat M. <laughs> why don't we like, do, do that? <laughs> Okay, so I'll help, I'll give you think time. All right, but in the meantime, for me, it comes Thank back you. to vulnerability again. Vulnerability. Yeah. Because cause when I had to put my hand up and talk, okay, I'm struggling in this space, mm. all of a sudden the whole world knows he's struggling in this space. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, but to be honest, it actually doesn't matter mm. what the world, because this is the reality. My friends and the people that love me yep. will start praying for me. Yep. The naysayers. Yeah. Mm. Who gives a rip? You know what I mean? Because like yeah. the poor you will always have with you. So they're going to judge you and they're going to say this mm. and they're going to say that. It's not up to me to determine how people are going to judge me because I'm struggling at this point in time in this space. Um, I, I, for me, I just needed to be honest and transparent, vulnerable with mm. the people that love and care for me. They will pray for me. They will help yeah. me. And that's why I'm back here today. But you've got to be vulnerable. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And I, once again, I just think that um, we worry about what people will think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just that simple. Like we worry that people will think that maybe our the way that we lead, the way that we do things is impacted because of the journey that we on we are on in our mental health. If we break an arm, it's like, yeah, we break an arm. But I think at the end of the day, people can see through transparency if we're being transparent or not. Mm. Um, mm. Like often there is this thought process in people that, we think that oh they don't worry about it you know we we don't have to we don't have to say this or say that we don't have to be transparent we don't have to say the whole story but i think people can see if we're being transparent or not and i think uh where it is wise we need to be transparent um and we need to go down that journey yeah i, I would think for someone in my position mm. the reason people would try and cover up mm. is because there's so many horror stories out there in other churches yeah. and other workplaces mm where they haven't been treated well, they haven't been cared for. Yeah. Um, my, my story is not that at all. Mm. As in, um, you know, it's like my, my story is one that I was able to put up my hand and say I'm drowning mm. and you all came to my rescue. As in, I thank God for that. Yeah. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like I, I, I love this space. It's like you, you ask about church, yeah, this is the greatest church in the world. Mm. And, and it's like... That's because of the greatest relationships I have are here. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's. I was just going to say, I think sometimes we think that um, like God isn't okay with our human condition, our human weakness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's and, true. Um, and it's in great. reality, he, he has chosen to build his church with us, mm -hmm. yeah. with our human condition, with our yeah. human weakness, knowing um, that we, you know, we are but dust. Yeah. yeah. Um, I even. That's great. This was in relation to something else, but we're going here. Um, <laughs> the, I had a verse in Hebrews 4, 16, which says, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace 
in our time of need. Yeah. yeah. We can't we can't approach his throne with confidence if we think that weakness is sin. Yeah. Weakness isn't sin, weakness yeah. is our human condition. Yeah. And we need to approach the Lord yeah. knowing our weakness, knowing that in him we find our help. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't get help from him if we um don't want to acknowledge that we need yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that comes down to humility as well. Once yeah. again, like it just goes full circle knowing that we don't always have it all together. <laughs> okay, so what is the, the correlation, Reverend Pat? <laughs> Reverend Pat, I like humility it. Humility and humanity, because you were talking about our human state. And I agree with you, absolutely. God is actually okay with our humanity. Yeah. Because he, yeah. he walked as a human. He knows our frailty. He knows our weaknesses. What is the connection between humility and humanity? Well, I, they actually come from the same root word. Get out um, of here. They do. They absolutely do. It's true. He's an engineer. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Well, I'm a pastor. I was an engineer. Oh, uh, and a fisherman. Uh, and a fisherman of men. I love my fisherman. A fisher of men. He's a fisher of fish. A fisher, of fish. A fisher of fish. And a fisher of men, I hope. Uh, and a Gemini. <laughs> uh, is that but, your star sign? With a, with a, <laughs> a, a Gemini with a V6. That's what is that? Yes. Gemini. Yes. I like it. Yeah. 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 We're talking cars. All the car guys out there. Yeah. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. That's right. Most but they, they come from the same things. root word. <laughs> and I think. As humanity, we are, we need to understand that we are creation and we serve the creator. Okay, tell us about the root word. The root word. Yeah. Uh, the root word is humus. 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 Yeah. Humus. Which yeah. Means hummus. From hummus. soil or from earth. Okay, so yeah. humanity Rounded. is Rounded. from the ground. Yeah. So humanity is from the ground. Correct. And humility means to be grounded. That's right. That's right. Mm. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Great thought, Pastor Bayer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, want to, that one did, you want, <laughs> did you want to extrapolate on that thought? Uh, look, I'm happy to pass it around the table on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there any further, we, we went through all that um, trouble going through the root word. Is there anything else we want to talk about that? No, I, I just want to bat off uh, what Emily was saying. I absolutely agree with that, the humanity side. And it's like, why, why do we think if we keep it a secret, God doesn't know? Yeah. <laughs> why do we think if we keep it a secret, our family doesn't know. And we're talking about anything here. It's like, mm. And so secrets, and this is duplicity, isn't it? Mm. It's like, why, why do we do this? Why do we try to cover up? Let's go back to the garden, Adam and Eve in the mm. garden. They fall, and what do they do? All of a sudden they've got a cover up. Mm. Yeah. So they're running off in the nutty and they're getting the little, <laughs> the little palm leaves and they're trying to cover up. And it's like, but that's what we do, we cover yeah. up. And I think, you know, to be honest, I think, I think it's one of the great challenges we have in the church when it comes to, and it's a challenge we have as pastors is like all this cover up. And it's like, we don't need to cover up from mm. everybody all the time. And I'm, I'm not saying we need to re reveal everything to everyone, mm. but there needs to be people in our life mm. that we can be honest with, we can be transparent with, vulnerable with, mm. and in the knowledge that we are in this together. Mm. And it's yeah. like, for me, the, one of the greatest, one of the greatest things, Christian, when it came, go back to the question, how did I come through what I've come through? Mm. And I don't know that I'm all the way out yet. I reckon I'm way, way, way down that track. They will, they will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> I think I'm almost down. Every now and again, that shadow reaches for my heel yeah. and i got to kick it off. But I'm here today because I was vulnerable. I was transparent. I owned where I was at. It's great. you got to own where you're at. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't own where you're at, so how many of you know, you'll never arrive where you want to arrive if you don't Firstly, locate, this is where I'm at. Yeah. Sober judgment, this is where I want to go to. So, so I had to own it and then begin to move forward. And so but I thank God that I was able to be, um, I was in a position where I'm surrounded by so many great men and women of God mm. who do love me, who do care for me, have my best interests at heart. As in great. most senior pastors, okay, so you know I relinquished, uh, I, I, was, I, I missed three board meetings. How many board meetings have I missed in my life at 25 years none i missed three board meetings vision team continued on mm. you all worked together as in i was able to rest in god and get the, the medical help that i needed work with my family and all of you and here we are mm. thank god that's great yeah so since we're going into definitions root words and being all theological um from a biblical perspective why are integrity and humility important for all individuals regardless of what we do because i know that we're pastors here and 
we're talking about a leadership forum, yeah, that goes to uh, enjoy pastors and leaders. But this is relevant for everyone in every space. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I would just say that um, I think it's very important because it talks about an undivided heart toward God. You know, I'm not trying to live my life in my own will as well as the will of the Lord. I need to surrender my will for the sake of living for his will. Mm. I need to surrender my life and die to myself for the sake of living for him and what he wants to do. Um, and, yeah, it, it reminds me of that double-mindedness that mm. um, in James where it talks about a double-minded man is unstable in all he does, um, you know, when I'm unstable in all I do, when I'm double-minded, when I'm not, um, when I'm trying to live out of what I want mm. as well as God and not surrendered to him, yeah. then I'm going to be unstable. I won't have a firm foundation. Mm. Um, I'll be trying to just tick boxes in my behavior for the sake of, um, you know, looking like I'm doing all the right things, yeah. but when it's out of an undivided heart toward God, then I think um, it flows. It becomes a lot more simple. Like yeah. we were saying before, I want to yeah. be accountable yeah. because I know that that's going to honor the Lord and that's um, how I can be shaped more into the likeness of God. I, I will want my yes to be yes and my no to be no yeah. because I'm committed to his will and not my own. Mm -hmm. I think it just becomes more simple, not, not always easier, but I think it definitely becomes a lot more simple um, when our heart is to serve the Lord only and out of that place, everything else flows because we will be made more into the likeness of God. That's, yeah. that's great, Emily. Mm -hmm. And so we get, we get ask, you know, at the end of the day, what are we trying to do here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as pastors, yeah. what are we actually trying to do here mm -hmm. as, as husbands, as wives, yeah. parents, friends, neighbours? What are we trying to do here? And it's like... You know, I think I said it in the last podcast, at the end of the day when we talk about uncommon leadership, we really want to be like Christ. This is the goal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. we, we need to remember in all of this we are Christians first. Mm -hmm. We want to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. If you live a life that pleases the Lord, it actually brings about fruit and reward all by itself. Yeah. Which, which, which personally I, I love. It's like as in we, we don't do it for the fruit and the reward. Mm. But the reality is, mm -hmm. as we serve the Lord with gladness and we serve him with a whole heart, an undivided heart, it does bring about its own its own re reward and return. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to read a couple of verses, if I may, Pastor Christian. Absolutely. Your hair looks fantastic today. Yeah, it is yours. And so uh, in, rega in regard to integrity, let's just uh, flip down to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. It says, the integrity of the upright guides them, mm -hmm. but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Mm -hmm. There we go. That word we're talking about, mm, destroyed yeah. by duplicity, yeah. but the integrity of the upright guides them. And I, I love the fact that, you know, there's so many things as I look back over our 25 years at Enjoy Church, how God has led us from place to place to place, what mm -hmm. he has done. It's integrity that has kept us on track. Yeah. It says here in Psalm 25 verse 21, may, may integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Yeah. My hope, Lord, is in you. Therefore, because my hope is in you, I'm going to walk in integrity. Yeah. So integrity for us isn't a choice. Mm -hmm. And integrity, when, when we talk about integrity, we're not always integrity. We're not always talking about the big decisions. Yeah. It's the little daily things that most people don't yeah. even give thought to. Yeah. It's only this. It's only that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. It's like, it's like, but there, that's what's going to get us into trouble. It says here in Proverbs 20 verse 7, the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Blameless life. We're going to live blamelessly. We're going to walk in integrity. No duplicity. Mm. We can't have people pointing the finger. No, because we walk in the light as he is in the light. Yeah. And it's going to be all right. Da, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Now, what does it say? Ecclesiastes five, verse 5. New song, bro. Get it out there. Uh, it is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Mm. Yeah. Integrity, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 yep. encourages honesty and integrity. It says, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour. Mm. Put off falsehood. Let's, let's stop the baloney. Let's stop double talk, speaking out of this side of my mouth to this group, this side to that group. I want to speak, speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. That's obviously the... 
uh, integrity side of things. What about when it comes to humility? I'm just throwing out some verses because mm. if if we can get this sorted in our life, mm. now we're, we're talking about what we would desire, what we desire. In a moment, I think you're going to lead to the space where, okay, what happens mm -hmm. when we don't have integrity mm. and what happens when we don't have humility? Because we are getting asked by lots of people, particularly our younger people, the 20-something-year-olds, mm. okay, what the heck's going on on planet Earth in the church? Because we're seeing stuff that just doesn't make any sense. And so humility mm. says here, James chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Humility opens the door to receiving blessings and mm -hmm. favour from God. In Matthew 23, verse 12, Jesus says, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Mm -hmm. Humility positions us for God to ele elevate us. Yep. And it's like, it's like, but to humble oneself, mm -hmm. you've got to be vulnerable. You've got yep. to be prepared to. One of the things that I love about Enjoy World, we hear it in the... Um, in our guest lounges all the time, is the people on the platform are so vulnerable. And I, I love that. As in mm. we're just trying to be real and live a life in the light that people can see and realise, okay, you don't actually have to be perfect mm. to live a life in Christ. Uh, personally, I love that fact. Yeah. Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Yeah. Ephesians 4 verse 2 completely humble, uh, uh, sorry, urges us to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another mm. in love. Humility fosters peace within communities. Yeah. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8, it, it encourages here. It just goes on and talks about we should have the same attitude that is in Christ because he humbled himself yeah. and became obedient even to the point of death. Yeah, The point of death is not good. Okay, so let's just go there. Yeah, let's go there. Because to be humble, you've got to die to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of you have worked out Jesus just wants to kill you? <laughs> he wants to, in, the in the most beautiful way. In the most in the beautiful yeah, exchange. Yeah, yeah. Just let yeah, it happen. Yeah. We've got to be careful when we pray that. Eh? Just, <laughs> but both uh, Elijah and Moses, uh, you know, there were some verses last year that became, uh, came right home and they both played, prayed, Lord, kill me now. Yeah. As in, I'm done with this. I can't handle the pressures. But rather than, Lord, kill me now, maybe a better prayer would be, Lord, help me to die to myself that I might mm. live for you, that I might yeah. actually yeah. live humbly and with integrity yeah. before the Lord all the days of my life. Yeah. So off the back of that, a lot of catch-ups with young adults and others yep. asking that question, what is happening what is happening? right now in the world? And part of it is like, oh, I think it's always happens we've yep. got examples all throughout the bible that's right to teach us really yeah um, there's nothing new under the sun but reflecting on that um what do you think some of the root causes are the underlying issues that lead to failures in maintaining uh integrity and humility yeah i think that the heart is always a complicated space for any human hey it's like we we, we we're all on a journey to being made into the image of christ I can understand why our younger people would be like, what on earth is going on? To be honest, I think social media has played a very large role mm -hmm. in the concerns that are happening at the moment. And the reason I say that is because you're right, this is not new. It's been happening all through the Bible that happened. Um, mm -hmm. Men and women of God fell. Except for Jesus, they all fell. That's right. They all had their days. They all had their challenges and were struggling with their own internal realities. What we have now, though, is we have a generation um, where heroes are, are put on platforms, on social media platforms. So these are our heroes. So they're, they're elevated to a place, but as quickly as they're elevated, unfortunately, the whole world can see when they fall. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, and some of the falls recently have been of a huge nature. There's no doubt about it, epic falls. And so, so it leaves our young people questioning what is going on. But, but like I say, it's been happening throughout the ages. But yeah. the issue is always the same. It's always about the heart. Yeah. It's always about the heart. When, when, people, when people fail, when people fall, it's always about the heart. When there's a lack of integrity, it's about the heart. When there's a lack of humility, it's about the heart. When there's pride coming in, it's about the heart. Yeah. All these areas are about the heart. So where do we go from here in the conversation? Well, I think you mentioned it um, probably about seven minutes ago. Um, <laughs> 
uh, it's almost like what's important to us. Because I know that for me as uh, a dad and I've always been driven and as a pastor I'm driven and I feel like I want to achieve and I think sometimes that gets more important I put more importance on that, you know, numbers and and data and and doing instead of becoming. Um, mm. I, I struggle with that all the time. Yeah. Um, um, when you've been in ministry for the amount of time that you have, yeah. you see things come full circle. Okay, so and, that's right. So we, we've obviously seen um, across the globe some of the, the ministers that we love and appreciate and celebrate um, – some of them have had massive falls. Some of them have just gone going on a journey, and it's like, okay, what 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 is happening here? No one goes into into ministry to have a massive fall in mm -hmm. uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 years time. Yeah. No one does that. We all start the same. Just so thankful and appreciative that God saved us. We, as in, for my for me, I never wanted to go into ministry. I just had a heart of appreciation for what God had done in me. So I just started serving in the church. And, and when I got given opportunity, it was like, ah, oh, to think that God would allow me to do what this or God would allow me to That's do great. that. And so so we all start we all start in humility. We all start wanting to walk the line of integrity. But then what you're saying is right, Christian. Okay, so so most most people that are doing anything on planet Earth have a bit of choleric in them. Uh, because they're, they're wired to get up and go. Mm. Type A personality. So you've got a type A personality and choleric and, and you're full of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to be careful because you, you, you're going to be driven because, you know, Paul said to King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. You get a vision from God mm. and you're wired to do something for God. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got the power. You've got the enthusiasm. And then all of a sudden it's like, and you type A and you're choleric. And so what starts off like I, I used to say to our guys, like when we when we got here 25 years ago, I, I, I this is what I said when it came to the music team, worship team, because uh Georgie was playing keys, she knew three chords. I, I would lead. All you need. And uh, <laughs> and then we had Ash Battle, who will probably be on our next podcast. Uh we had Ash Battle on the bass, and that that was it on day one. And I, I said that if I if I can get a keyboard player. A real one. Sorry, Georgie. And uh, uh, if I can get a bass player, a guitar player, and a drummer, I said we can change the world. And uh, because the Beatles, you know what I'm saying? It's like four of them. So I'm figuring if we got if we it's could do formula. that. But then as you go along and you get the four, and then you get the eight, and then you get the, and then you you're going from uh, 48 in our first service to 140, 144 on our larger service, uh, larger service where where the chairs began to break literally under under people and the chaos <laughs> in the room, and, and then you you go into a building and then you then you step into another location ten years later, yeah. and you got these these scorecards. Now mm. I know that no one's going to call them a scorecard, but the numbers become important mm -hmm. because we're driven people. And then all of a sudden people are celebrating what we're doing, not what God we're, we're doing. Ooh, and it's okay. like, and yeah. something begins to shift. Yeah. It's so important that we remain grounded. Humility, yeah. we came yeah. from the ground. Yeah. We've got to stay grounded. We need people around the table that, are, that can say to us, hey, it seems that, that the number of people is becoming more important than the care of people. Mm. And it's like, because at the end of the day, if we're not helping people to become more like Christ, if it becomes about numbers and what we're achieving, then pride is at the door. Yeah. And we can so quickly move from that humble position to walking with integrity to a place where it's like, it's not meant to be about this. Yeah. And like I said, so when, in, in, when, when pride comes in, the integrity of all that we're doing is going to be questionable. Yeah, oh, pride, and pride. it and it doesn't happen overnight. It's bite-sized pieces, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's very, very gradual, yeah. and um, you know, the word desensitized can often come to mind when talking about this yeah. topic because we become desensitized to those small increments heading towards this direction, and it just comes back to having those people to pull us back in, staying yeah. grounded, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because how great is the fall? Mm. At the end of the day, you know, you know, the scripture talks about sand and rock, and it's mm. like. Uh, the sand 
is a foundation that has no integrity. Yeah. Mm. That's why it's going to come down. Yeah. And so, and this is the danger because we, we're talking about the shallow end of the pool, but sin is at the end. Mm. And if we don't pull this thing up mm. and get out of this pool altogether, mm. um, we will end up swimming in that space of sin. Mm. And sin is going to cause the house to come down. Now, when we talk house, we can talk about my life, we can talk about my marriage, we can talk about my family, we can talk about church because we're pastors, we can talk about a business, business yeah. but where, no. where, where there's sin and a lack of integrity and humility, it's a matter, only a matter of time before it's all yeah. going to be revealed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the thing I love about God, God is gracious and kind, and if, I, if I'm at the three foot end of the pool and I'm making my way down here, he has got lifesavers on both sides of the pool saying, stop, stop, <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Swim between the flags. <laughs> yeah. that, that's right. If you don't, you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. And But the, the problem is when the house comes down, the pain that it creates to everybody. It's not mm. just like if, if I, if, okay, if, if I make decisions that disqualify me from ministry, it's not just me that pays the price. It's like I got I got I got adult children. Mm. I got grandbabies now. I got a beautiful wife that loves me. And it's like when and it's like I can talk about that, but then you know as well as I do, there are thousands of people that are listening to this today that are part of Enjoy World. Yeah. That I've got to tell you, I love. So it's like I can't get to that end. I don't want to get to that end. I need people yeah. that can call me out, slap me up the side of the head, mm-hmm. call me a bozo, bongo, <laughs> yobbo, bongo, hit me in the head. So, so it's a come and play the drums in my head like, like Michael Gordon did in, in the uh, primary school. And it's like we, we need people that can say, Shane, you are going down. It's like but if, if we don't have them in our life, we'll just keep on going. Yeah. And then when the house comes down, it's going to be terrible. Yeah. And I feel like there's a key there. Um, you said when you started, you were thankful that you had a real keyboard player. Now you have at Enjoy Church, there's, there's so many of them. One of them right here, one of the yeah. best keyboard players I've ever seen personally. Um, thank you. Well, you're thank welcome. You. Oh, absolutely. Be humble that. about Only that. Only from I'd, God, though, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to keep humble. Yeah. There's <laughs> another one that does pretty well, too, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few of them. He's Absolutely. pretty good. He's pretty good. Absolutely. Actually, there's probably another. Yeah. There's, there's, there's there's a, so, so, do you think a key to all of this is Christians like stop it there? <laughs> <laughs> um, is to be grateful. There's, oh, there's, there's one thing I constantly remember. You, during during COVID season, you know, we put massive hours into filming yeah, and, yeah. and blah blah blah, late nights and bubbles and this and whatever. And you'd call me and say thank you, and I'll c- continually tell you what are you thank me for, like. This is my job. Yeah, yeah. And you would say, no, you, I've got to thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have to thank you. And gratitude grat- uh, gratitude pleases the Lord. Mm-hmm. As in, remember the story where Jesus heals 10 lepers, only one comes back. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Only, only one comes back. You'd think, well, if 10 got healed, why didn't 10 come back? Yeah. And that's the same question. That's humanity right there. Mm-hmm. But one but one did come, come back and he was grateful. And, and I reckon... I reckon gratitude, uh, gratitude brings reward of its own as well. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about me thanking you because it meant something to you, but the way you live means something to me. And that's why, mm-hmm. you know, it's like I, I think by nature I'm probably a fairly grateful individual okay. and I'm thankful by nature. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's not enough. It's, it's not enough for me to have a, a thankful and grateful nature if I don't express it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As in. But when I express it, you know that you are valued, mm. and because I do value, and I did value those, those two COVID years. It's in uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, those two COVID years were out of control, and but <laughs> the way that people, you know, I, I still remember um, the blessing. Mm. How, how many people were involved? And I look at my screen. I still hear when I hear that song, I cry. I can't help mm. it because I remember the time. There might have been fifty different individuals on there. Yep. In their bedrooms, in their in their in yeah. their lounge rooms, in their yeah. family rooms, playing instruments, and then the the choir and the singers, and oh my lord! Mm. It's like I, I hear that I cry today because I'm so thankful for that one thing that you you guys and girls did together. Mm. That you all did as a yeah. as a team, and it's like 
But that got us through the two hardest years of my ministry life. And it's like that effort, that energy, that commitment. And so for me not to be thankful, I, I don't know. I can't help but be thankful. I'm just so grateful to be to be able to do life with people like yourselves. Yeah. For me, for me, you know, I, I took some people up to my uh office the richmond supporters i met him in the foyer and i said come and have a look at my office so because it's covered in all the all the premiership wins from the past, from the past. and um <laughs> and uh we got them up there and you know people talk to us about being the senior pastors to be honest it's, it's a wonderful privilege but to be part of the family is better mm. you know i understand that i we we have a role in the church but to be part of this family to be surrounded by men and women like mm. yourselves. Forever thankful, forever grateful. But when gratefulness runs out mm. and thankfulness runs out, mm -hmm. yep. it's then we flip into entitlement. Yeah. Okay. And wow. then it's like, you owe me. You being the church, you being individuals, you being, no one owes anybody anything. Mm. Jesus paid the price. I'm living my life by faith. It's great. We turn up, we do what we do by faith as under the Lord. Mm -hmm. We serve each other, we serve the Lord. No one owes. This is not a place of entitlement. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually entitled to anything. But that's where you'll go. That's right, yeah. And with entitlement, he has a friend called pride. Mm -hmm. I'm entitled because, you know, do you know who I am? <laughs> it's like I'm a carpenter like our Lord and Saviour. Yeah. Georgie's a receptionist. I've been told by great leaders that I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Don't <laughs> say you're just a carpenter, mm -hmm. like Lord Savior. Savior. You put yourself down. No, no. I'm just keeping my feet on the ground. Yeah, that's good. And I'm happy to have them yeah, on the that's ground. Good. Humility. Yeah, well, Direct like, connection. Yeah, and it, okay. as in to think that I'm anything but just a guy who got saved, who's got something to contribute, mm. but it doesn't make me better than anybody else yeah, or greater than good. anybody else. So good. I, mean, I just play my part. Absolutely, it's cool. Um, Am I? Sorry. Oh, Go sorry. For it. I was just going to say, off the back of what you were saying, um, like playing your part and just a man, things like that. Um, I remember when, very quickly, when I came to enjoy hearing about um, different things that we had in place in terms of our culture when it came to, like, just going back to a root of where do these things come from. Um, yeah, hearing um, different things that we have in place to protect us, guardrails, I guess, that we have. Mm -hmm. um, something, you know, like we have on all of our offices, we have um, glass doors. When it comes to driving somewhere, you don't go in a car with, um, when you're married with someone of the opposite sex, single or married. Um, you know, different things like that that we have in place. And I remember hearing about that and thinking, oh, what a, what a show of humility because I don't think, Pastor Shane, that you think your whole team is going to have an affair. But mm. I think it's... I hope not. <laughs> hopefully. Um, <laughs> but um, it's a... Yeah. All it is is just stewarding our humanity yeah. and stewarding in a, it in a way that That's honors great. God mm. and putting certain things in place to protect us from going over the line. I think it's mm. um, a dangerous spot when we think... I would never do that. That's that would it never won't happen, happen to me. Life. Yeah, exactly. It won't right. happen to that, me. That's when you're most vulnerable. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember going over the dividing range one time and it had been snowing and there's no guardrails. Mm. There's just the odd post yeah. <laughs> along the road. Yeah. And then you got this massive yeah. drop. And it's like, this is insane. And you don't feel safe at all because, mm -hmm. but the guardrail is to yeah. keep you in a safe space. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's for. We the guardrail isn't there to bounce off. Mm -hmm. The guardrail is just there to let you know you don't want to go here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't want to go. Here. I think one of the great challenges with um, some is they want to know how close to the edge of the cliff they can get. Mm -hmm. where, you know, where can they put their toes to? I'm like, well, if you know the cliff is here. Why don't you stand over there? Yeah. As in, I don't like heights that much. <laughs> I'm not, not going to be standing ever out there. But the reality is in life, we will tend to go to the, as far as we can. And for me personally, um, I, I don't want to be remembered and I don't want any of our team members to be remembered as the guys that went where they shouldn't have gone. Mm. It's like, it's like, I, I, it's like, I just don't want anyone to go there. So we do have things in place like, it's like we, we don't, if, unless there's a glass door, we don't want um, husbands, wives, 
men and women of the opposite sex, particularly if they're if they're married, um, in offices where the where the door is closed if there's no glass. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's like, but isn't that fearful? No, it's called wisdom. Yeah. It's called yeah. wisdom. Yeah. No one ever just wakes up with someone in their bed. It doesn't <laughs> happen there. Yeah. And it's like for me, it's like Louise Arioka has been on staff for I don't know, 22 years. And for many years, we would have to go to ACC events. We'd leave the office together. She would drive her car. I would drive my car, arrive at the same place. And now I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's, that's, that's over the top. You can say whatever you want. Mm. After 35 years, I'm happily married. Yeah, yeah. And that's great. they're happily married. And it's like it just takes – this is a reality. On our best days, we're all on our best behaviour. On our worst days – that's when our worst behaviour can come to the front. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't just happen with one decision. Yeah. No one ever just wakes up in bed with someone. Mm-hmm. It's like it happened way back here at some point. Mm-hmm. A thought came in yep. and it wasn't squashed. Yeah. It wasn't killed. Yep. And then from here to here to here to here to here, death by a thousand paper cuts, yeah. I arrive here. And we can talk about we can talk about adultery, we can talk about fraud, we can talk about all sorts of deception mm. and manipulation and whatever. Mm. It's like, but this is why we have guardrails. Guardrails are smart. Yeah. 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 So because it's for our worst day, eh? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so our worst day. We can you're driving down the road. The night that we were driving down the road and it was snowing, out of nowhere, there's a deer running along beside us. It was like we're only doing maybe 20k because uh-huh. it was middle of night, snow. Here's this deer. It is going kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. We can all get hit by a deer. When, it, when the deer jumps out, what are we going to do? That's when you need the guardrail. Mm. And in, in ministry, you're going to get hit. You're going to have great days. You're going to have bad days. But we want to stay on our – we need guardrails. Very good. We want to stay where we need to stay. Very good. Cool. So questions here. If I've made a mistake, my integrity is shot. Obviously, different circumstances have – different consequences, but what do I do to restore my integrity? Yep. Can it be restored? Okay, yep, it can be restored. Yep. This is what I would say. We all make mistakes. Mm. As in, if there is someone listening that has never made a mistake, please reach out and we'll have you sitting here next time. Put <laughs> uh, it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We've all made mistakes. Yep. The best thing you can do when you make a mistake, because there are mistakes that, that uh, have very little consequence, there are mistakes that that really can bring the house down. doesn't matter whether it's little. You've got to take it in the context, okay, where, where is it in the scheme of things? Yeah. But regardless, we need to raise our hand. My, my, mm. my, my position on all of this is when I know I've crossed a line, um, you know, and it's, so over, the, over my marriage times, there's been times where in my head or what I've crossed a line, it's like, mm. I, I tell my wife, yeah, and it's like you tell your wife, and, and I know that some people say, "Why would you do that?" And it's because the moment I tell my wife, um, we can deal with it between ourselves, and then it. I'm talking about very, very shallow end of the pool in here. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. and it's like, but we have a conversation, and it's now in the light. If it's yeah. in the light, in the, light yeah. the power yeah. of that loses its power. Yep. It's lost its power it's because it's in the light. Yep. So um, so I need to raise my hand. But likewise, if I'm at the deep end of the pool and I've made a massive mistake and I'm going to blow my integrity, still the, the same. it's the same thing. I need to repent and repentance is bringing into the light. Yeah. Um, and so you bring it into the light and then you start your journey. It's like, you know, being accountable, this is where accountability is always interesting, isn't it? As in I can raise my hand. We, We've obviously spoken in the office recently about someone in America who who made uh, a massive blunder, who got up in front of the whole world and confessed, and then the the movement that they were a part of said, well, this will be the discipline, and he said yes for about three days and then went and did his own thing. And it's like you're never going to you're never going to get back to where God would have you get back to. Mm-hmm. If you won't own and submit to the authorities that you're under in regards to moments like this, yeah. it's like we, we will all make mistakes. It's like may they be small ones, may they be minor ones, may be, may they be ones that don't impact anybody other than our own 
self and walk mm. with God. And but when we when we do when we make a mistake, we've got to own it. Mm. As in, forget the fluff, forget the excuses, mm. forget all of that. Yep. Mm. Just own it. It's mm. very good. I made a mistake. How do I? What do I need to do? Very good. Yeah. Puzzle. Cool. You were talking about Pastor Shane, the um, how a grateful heart and being thankful, things like that. Um, and then you mentioned about um, because you know what you're saved from, it's yeah. the blood of Jesus that covers. I think um, in order for us to fully embrace grace, in order for us to be fully thankful, we yeah. need to be first fully repentant yeah. and, um, yeah, fully repenting of what it is. Yeah. And then in yeah. that space knowing that God is good, he's kind, he is forgiving, um, and you can go on that journey. Yeah. Um, so, and this a little bit come, comes back to integrity and humility again, yeah, doesn't it? it does. Because there, there is no way um, that we can receive the grace of God unless there's true repentance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we all want grace to be shown, mm -hmm. but then there has to be true repentance. Part of true repentance is, okay, what is the process to be restored? Yeah. Okay, because that's what we're talking about. It's like, okay, I've lost my integrity. I've shot it to bits. And I lost my reputation. How, can I ever come back? Yeah, but it's going to be a process, mm -hmm. and and that's just the way life is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, we we obviously we pastor a lot of people, and a lot of people come into churches yeah. uh, into our locations that have been in other churches where pastors have had all sorts of falls, and and so they come in and they come in not trusting us. Mm -hmm. What do we do with that Christian? Well, that's like it's like we didn't do anything wrong, but and we understand why there would be a lack of trust after they've seen a lack of integrity and humility and now they come here and it's like, are you going to be the same? How do we take people on a journey to well, healing and wholeness? Well, that's it. It's taking people on a journey and being patient. Yeah. Um, we don't understand what they've gone through mm -hmm. and we can't think that we understand the implications on their life. Yeah. Something that's a big deal for, you know, Pat might not be a big, big deal for me and vice versa. Um, so patience is one of them. Yeah. Um, but I also think that it's the responsibility. Once the person gets to know you and there's love and then exchange and patience, mm -hmm. the person that's gone through that, they're also responsible for opening up. Yeah. Like you can choose. You can choose to never trust again. Mm -hmm. And that is not an, a good place to live. Yeah. It's, it's almost like something that just will continually hold you back. Um, so it's a journey that goes both ways. Um, like when you said, when you came to enjoy and you saw that there were guardrails that we, it wasn't that we're boastful about them, but it's just like, this is the wisdom we want to walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Transparent doors, don't ride in cars with the opposite sex. Those things allow people to start to trust. I, mm -hmm. I imagine that's, you went, all right, this is a safe place. Yeah. Um, but there's also a responsibility from the person that has um, that has been done, um, that wrong has been done to them. Okay. So, so open up. Okay. So as, as ministers, we're called to be an example. Yeah. All right. So that's what we need to be. And sometimes our example doesn't live up to where, where it should. When people come in and they're, they're processing, um, is trust something that should be earned or given? That's a great question. It is a I think, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I think it can be both. Yeah. 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 So depending on what, going back to relationships is spatial, mm. as in I think we allow people to come in to a space, mm. to a, not all the way, but to a space. For me, trust is always given, which is very interesting, isn't it? Because mm. people come into our world uh, from all sorts of places. So we, the, the playing field starts with me giving trust. Mm not all the way into my, my heart of hearts, but trust to come into my life and into my world. Yeah. So we give trust. And so that's where I start. You have to lose my trust rather than gain it because yeah. I give you trust yeah. because we're entering into a relationship. That's good. And so I'd be encouraging everybody. I, I've said this to numerous people over the years because they've said in our previous church, this happened, this happened, that happened. So I've said to numerous people over the years, <laughs> yeah, and it's like we're laughing because we just cut out. It's a cut, cut, cut. And it's like uh, I've said to numerous people over the years, don't you judge me on the people that have hurt you and I won't judge you on the people that have, because of the people that have hurt me. 
And it's like, yeah, that's good. We've got to start. We've got to start somewhere, don't we? And yeah. it's like, but I do understand how people can get hurt. I do understand how people um, can come in very broken because of what they're experiencing in life. Mm-hmm. You get it. And in all of this, um, we, we're, we're responsible for speaking truth, but it has to be in love. Yeah, we can't just be throwing Bible verses yeah. and saying, yeah. you know, this and that, and you shouldn't be feeling this. But to be able to speak to people in love has always had um, the best interactions, the best way to journey something out with people is speaking truth in love. Yep. And sometimes it can take a year or two for people to actually get to a point where yeah, we trust these people. Yeah. And I understand that. Absolutely. I, I get that. We've got to give people time. And I think as well, like, if it, it's devastating when someone is, is hurt in church and it's also so beautiful when, when that's healed in a church setting. And I think as well, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, the church is God's design. Yeah. It's God's plan. Mm-hmm. Um, he's chosen mm-hmm. to partner with us who are imperfect um, and and if someone has been hurt in church, you don't want to miss out on what what God is doing in the church and what is God, what God is doing through the church. You don't want yeah. to miss out on, um, yeah, God healing that space yeah. and also you being part of what God wants to do. Yeah, that's true. I think one of the great challenges we have as pastors is to let people take their time. Mm. Is it because like we see gifts in people, we see talent in people, and it's like, oh, you could do it. But it's like, okay, is this relationship about what you can do for me or is it about us yeah. moving forward together? Yeah. And so yeah, that's a great I remember film. when Tom and Vivian McDonald came in to enjoy church yeah. two years into our journey and they'd come out of a, a, a church scenario which was a bit brutal on them internally. And so it took two years of them sitting and watching mm. Before they got to a place where, yeah, like we we are trusting of this leadership and we want to go. And as you know, you know the story. Tom and Vivian played a key role mm, for right. over two decades in the life of Enjoy, and what a great blessing they have been and still are, still that's in a great. relationship. And it's absolutely beautiful, and we thank God for that. But if we had pushed from the beginning, mm. maybe we would have missed out on what God was wanting to do in them, and then what they were going to bring to us as well. So just got to take your time. Yeah. Calm the farm. Just settle. Calm the farm. There's, Calm that's the farm. quotable. Just take a bit of time. Yeah. Any final thoughts on this? Um, two very important characteristics characteristics of leadership: integrity and humility. Yeah. Um, in Matthew chapter five, it talks about not hiding our light, but actually putting it out for all to see. We live in a world that is is corrupt. There is so much darkness in this world, and if we are to be people that have this light and show up for all to see. We need to be people of integrity and humility. I think it's just that important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, probably final thought is um, integrity and humility. I think what it looks like in our life um, comes out of the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, And when it's the fruit of the spirit, the other part in that verse in Galatians where it talks about is that um, in order to be in step we need the spirit to be in step with the spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we need we need surrender to God. We need an undivided heart toward the Lord in order to live a life of integrity and humility. Yeah. And that's the funny thing as well is that um, I think you need in humility in order to go to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so I think, honestly, us being okay with the fact that we are but dust, as we were saying, yeah. looking at ourselves with sober judgment yeah. and knowing that God is a good and faithful God and that in, through him we can do all things through Christ. Yeah. For me, uh, being the week leading up to Pentecost Sunday, um, I am so grateful that we don't have to just do this in our own strength, this space of humility and integrity, mm. but we have a helper in the Holy Spirit mm. that um, guides us, that convicts us, not condemns us, but you know when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and saying, don't go there. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. And we've got a counselor and a helper. And I just love that God has given us that yeah. on this earth to be able to do something that maybe is not natural for humans to do. But with yes. his power, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, we're in, we're in good stead <laughs> to be able to do it. Yeah. So. It's great. It's great for me. Um, when I think about these two realities, one of the one of the key phrases around enjoy church is my heart, my responsibility. Yeah. My heart, my responsibility. Before I'm a pastor, before I'm a husband, before 
father, grandfather, friend, whatever the case may be. I'm actually a son of God, mm. a child of God. I mm. want to live a life that pleases the Lord. I know this. I know this. Integrity will put me in good standing with God. Humility will put me in good standing with God. We, we, if, we, if we achieve everything that we have on our boards, achieved it all, but don't walk in integrity and don't live in humility, have we really pleased the Lord? Mm. I don't think we will. You know, coming out of last year, you, you have the opportunity to examine and contemplate and think about your own life, where we're at, what we're doing. And, you know, be, being a, a, a child of God is the pinnacle, isn't it? It's like everything else comes out of that. We, we, we don't live to do that. We live to be in him mm. and have him within. Yeah, and great. so living with integrity is obviously pleasing the Lord. Living in humility pleases the Lord. And like I said, they're, they're both attendants that bring yeah. great great reward all by That's himself. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look at our world and, you know, one of the things I love is we have a good reputation as a church and as pastors and leaders yeah. and that is because we walk in integrity, try to live in humility mm -hmm. and I'm just so thankful for it all. So my heart, my responsibility. That's great. And if, I think if we continue to live like this, it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. We'll be okay. Absolutely. Amen. Amen.